Okay, this is going to be part nine of the series on improper integrals. Um, but in this series, we'll look at uh, improper integrals with what are called infinite discontinuities. Now, if you haven't done it yet, I would watch the part eight video because it describes where these three cases came from and gives you an idea how we developed those. So this will be the first example that we've worked now using one of these three cases. Um, now, the case that we'll look at in this will actually be a case two. So we'll look at a couple of problems involving case two where we have an asymptote on the left-hand side of the interval and the function will approach infinity. Um, we'll look at one problem where it converges and another problem where it diverges. And you might remember one of the things that you'll have to do is to decide whether it's convergent and you have a solution or it's divergent and you don't have a solution. So again, if you're confused by this part, uh, back up and watch the part eight video and it'll explain where all this came from. So anyway, with this in mind, let's take a look at the problem and see what a problem looks like. Okay, now the problem looks like this. Suppose you wanted to find the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over the square root of x. Now, if you did the graph, the graph would look like this. <clears throat> and the problem, though, is this. Is if you let x equal 0, you have division by 0. So you actually have an asymptote right here uh, at x is equal to 0. So we'll put an asymptote right here on the left-hand side. So as the graph gets closer and closer to 0, it takes off and it goes off toward positive infinity, so you have an infinite discontinuity, and what this does, it falls into uh, this category right here. So a case two problem uh, where you have an, an asymptote on the left-hand side of the interval. So now how to solve the problem. Now remember what we did, just kind of review the steps again. The idea is between A, you want to find the integral from A to B, so come in somewhere between A and B and pick a point C. And first of all, you'll do this black part right here. You'll evaluate the definite integral from C to B, and then that'll be step one. Then in step two, you'll find the limit as C approaches A from the right. So you'll let C slide over toward A, then you'll pick up the entire integral. So a two-step process. And again, if you haven't done it, I'll watch the previous videos, and it'll get you familiar with the process. So let's see what it looks like on this particular problem. Okay, so what we'll do first of all is uh, we'll come in here just somewhere in the middle here and pick a point C. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is find this definite integral from here to here. So definite integral between C and 4 in part 1. Then we'll take the limit as C approaches 0 from the left. So we'll let C slide 0 and we'll pick up this extra integral. So let's run through the process. So again, the first process says the part in the middle here, the black part in the middle, evaluate the definite integral from C to the right side, B. So we'll put that down here as step one. So step one in this process would be find the definite integral from C to four of uh, one over the square root of x. And we'll go ahead and change that into one uh, over x to the one half power. So first of all, let's go ahead and evaluate just this definite integral. So this would be the integral from c to 4. Uh, move the x up to the top, make it be to the negative 1 half power. And then find the antiderivative of that. Well, that's going to be x to the 1 half power divided by 1 half. And the whole thing evaluated from uh, c up to 4. So we can rewrite this as, we'll take 2 and turn it upside down, and this will become 2 times the integral. And uh, we'll change that x to the 1 half back into the square root of x, evaluated from c to 4. Okay, so we'll come over here and now go ahead and plug the two things in. So when you evaluate the integral, again, just definite integral, plug in the top number and plug in the bottom number. So that'll turn into the square root of 4 uh, minus the bottom number, which would be the square root of c. Okay, and you simplify it a little bit. The square root of 4 would be 2. So this will be 2 times uh, 2 minus the square root of c. And then if you distribute this 2, you'd wind up with 4 minus 2 times the square root of c. 
So what this is going to be, this is going to be the definite integral that represents this blue shaded area right here. So that is, let's go back to our rules, um, that is the black part of the thing here. So now you know the integral from c to b. Now to find the entire integral, all you have to do is take the limit as c approaches a from the right. So let c slide toward a and you'll pick up this additional area. So what we'll do on our problem, this will be step two. So on step two, you're going to find the limit now again, let C approach zero from the right. So you want the limit as C approaches zero from the right of uh, four minus two times the square root of C. Okay, now when you find this limit, what it'll do is this. Um, as c approaches 0, the square root of c, this entire term right here, will go to 0. And all you'll be left with is the 4. So you've still got that 4, so it'll turn out to be 4, and that's going to be the solution to the problem. So this entire area from here all the way through here would be equal to uh, 4. Now in that case, this is a problem that converges, so this would be convergent because the limit settled on a single fixed number. So this is a convergent problem. Okay, and again, uh, now we'll look at a problem similar to this. In fact, the graphs will look the same, but we'll look at a problem that diverges. So let's go back to our rules again. And again, it'll still be this case two problem, but the problem this time will look like uh, this. So let's look at it. So now, Rather than having the same limits from 0 to 4, you've got 1, but rather than 1 over the square root of x, suppose you have 1 over x squared. Now the graph, it looks similar, but actually it goes up a little steeper and it comes down a little quicker over here. Uh, but it's a similar looking graph. Now we'll follow exactly the same process. So again, the first step is pick some c and evaluate this black definite integral in the middle. Then in step 2, take the limit as c slides over toward a. So we'll follow the same process that we did last time. So the first step is just coming up, if I were you to draw it on the graph, just pick some point C right here, and you're going to find the definite integral from C to 4, then you'll take the limit as C approaches 0 from the right. So we'll run through exactly the same steps that we did last time. So the first step is to evaluate the definite integral from C to 4, just like we did before, and this will be uh, 1 over x squared dx. Now again, what that's going to give us, it's going to give us this area between c and 4. So what this would look like would be the integral from c to 4, and we'll change this into x to the negative 2 dx. Um, find the antiderivative of that, which would be x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, evaluated from c to 4. Now we'll go ahead and bring the negative outside. So you've got a negative 1 times, and we'll take this x and move it back to the bottom, 1 over x evaluated from c to 4. Okay, now just plug in the top and bottom numbers there. <clears throat> so this would be negative 1 times, and then we'll plug in uh, the 4, first of all, so this would be 1 over 4 minus the integral from 1 over c. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and distribute that negative. So this would be negative 1 fourth plus 1 over c. So it looks like that. Now, again, what this is, uh, this represents in general terms, this shaded area, black shaded area here between c and 4. But you want to get the entire area, so now you'll take the limit as c moves to the left and you'll pick up this additional area over here. So we'll go on to step 2. So again, looking back at the rules, what you're doing is now you're going to find the limit as c approaches a from the right. So let's c slide toward a from the right. So what this would be is the limit as c approaches 0 from the right of this thing. So you'll have minus 1 fourth 
plus 1 over c. Now on this one, when you take this limit, it's going to be a little bit different. As c approaches 0, you're going to have 1 divided by a number that's getting closer and closer to 0. So this entire thing will go to infinity. So it'll increase without bounds. And one fourth compared to that, uh, this is the dominant term, and you can forget about this term. It really doesn't have any effect on it. To the point that this thing is going to approach a positive infinity. So what that means is, when you pick up this additional area over here, um, there's a wide gap here. This thing continues on, and the total area under here would actually approach uh, positive infinity. So what that means is that this one is divergent. So the limit does not settle on a fixed number, and there's not a fixed integral in there. So there's a sample of one problem which was divergent. I'm going to take a quick flip back again. Um, in the first problem, uh, when you found the limit, it settled on a fixed number, and the problem was convergent. And even though the graphs look a little bit similar, in the second problem, when you solve it, the limit is infinite, does not settle on a fixed number, so the solution is a little divergent. It actually doesn't have a solution. So anyway, that's what that is. That's an example of this case 2 rule here, where the asymptote was on the left-hand side. Now in the next couple of videos, we'll look at uh, a case 1 problem and a case 3 problem, where the asymptote's on the right-hand side or where the asymptote's in the middle.